What's up folks and welcome back to the garage. I have learned that uh, at least in this 940 Volvos uh, the instrument cluster problems are quite common and uh, when these cars gets, get old there will be usually some kind of problems. In this car I have problem with the fuel gauge. It doesn't work at all. The previous owner said that it works sometimes, but uh, at least the few weeks I have owned this car, I haven't seen, seen any movement in the fuel gauge. And the second problem is the temperature gauge. Uh, it works sometimes, sometimes not. And the speedometer has some kind of problems also, but I think that might be mechanical. The reason for these problems are usually bad connections and I have watched a few YouTube videos about this subject and I have learned at least one trick how I might get the fuel gates working which is now my goal and after the intro I will remove the instrument cluster and start troubleshooting. I just need these simple tools, screwdriver with the flathead and a T25 Torx. Uh, the instrument is attached with the four screws in the corners and uh, I need this screwdriver to remove this metal frame and I can see that someone has tried to do that before without knowing how to do it because this frame is broken from there. It should look like like that. You can see there's a metal spring behind the frame. So I just slightly push the spring with the screwdriver and after that the frame should be should came out quite easily. And after I have removed the frame, I will open the four screws. Quite easy job, only one surprise, there's some kind of um, connection, there's some yellow wire, I don't know what this is, but uh, there's some strange connections, I don't know reason for these, uh, but these tapes are not original, so if this, this wire harness would be original, it wouldn't be as difficult as it was to get the instrument panel on this position. And I had to also remove the, the hose from the, the boost gauge. But next I will take my multimeter. These three screws are involved with the fuel gauge. Uh, the in the middle should be the resistance coming from the fuel tank and from these two I should get 12 volts but I will make sure that with my multimeter. Next I will try to measure the resistance from the fuel tank sensor. I have the multimeter here and the resistance I have adjusted the meter to 200 and uh, I put the black one there and the red one to the pin which should be the resistance like that and now it shows 47 
and I have been told <laughs> or I have been watching few YouTube videos that um, when it's zero the tank is empty and when it's uh, 280 then it's full so it's quite empty the tank or it should be quite empty at the moment next we will do a little test I will pour some fuel to the tank and uh, then we will see if the number changes <laughs> Next, I will measure the resistance again, and uh, I hope you can see that, but it's 124 about, so 140 would be half tank, so it's a little less than half tank if the fuel sensor is working right. Uh, next. I will measure the voltage. We should get um, 10 to 12 volts to the third pin or screw. But now when I measure the voltage, at, at, I should turn the ignition. Yeah, the ignition is on. We should get 12 volts, but we get only way under one so there's something something going on here but next I will do a bypass and I will show you the trick I can get 12 volts from that screw down there and uh, I will use this short wire I just made I will Take the power from that screw and lead it to that one. And uh, I will also isolate the screw from the surface with this. Uh, this is actually from bicycle. <laughs> I have made a small hole in that. Just a sec. I'll be back right after I have done the job. Wiring ready. There's my small piece of rubber there to isolate the wire from the circuit. Mm. And the wire goes down there to that screw. And now it should be quite nice. Next I will put the instrument panel back on. And then I will turn the ignition key and we will see <laughs> what will happen. Now I just fit at the panel there. No screws yet. But next I will turn the ignition key and uh, let's hope something will happen. And yes, we have working fuel gates. Yes. Now the instrument cluster is back on. I put all the four screws, but I noticed that the, the panel is broken from the, from the right uh, bottom end. Somebody broke the bracket but it holds okay and the panel here is now okay and uh, check this the fuel gauge is still working but the temperature gauge the engine is cold and it shows that it's in the halfway so that will be my next pro project maybe <laughs> if you have good tips how to fix the the temperature gauge, I would appreciate your comments down below. And uh, this trick I didn't figure out by myself. Thank you, YouTube. I found a YouTube video. It was actually a Swedish one. Thank you, Sweden. <laughs> I'm so happy that I think I will use this car tomorrow morning when I'm driving to my work. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> But like I said, if you have some good tips for the temp gauge, I would appreciate your comments down below. And you can also comment this trick down below. That would be a great. And also remember, put the thumbs up. Thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, now it's a good time to do it because I will do more 
uh, of these turbo videos and uh, from my other project. The Saab 99 EMS is almost ready for the MOT, so some interesting videos will come out quite soon. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you soon!